the basic of mouthpieces and reeds. What is a tip opening? What is a facing curve? And what reed strength can be related to those? Coming up next. Welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is a basic understanding of mouthpiece tip opening right here, the facing curve, and how it affects the reed and the player. So now we'll figure out what that is. So now let us learn about some basics about how the facing curve and tip opening affect the reed strength. We're gonna cover some pictures real quickly so we can understand this. This is basic information. If you've never actually looked at it before or thought about mouthpieces, so we'll start looking at diagrams of this information right now. So what we're looking at here is basically the facing curve, which starts on the mouthpiece. You have the table right here, the flat part. And then at some point it starts curving towards the tip. So this red section identified here on the screen is the facing curve from the table to the tip. Now this facing curve, when we look at it, when the reed separates away from the curve to the tip, if it separates away from the mouthpiece further back towards the table, that's a long facing curve. If it's kind of in between, it's a medium facing curve. And if it separates close to the tip, then it's a short facing curve. Now the tip opening is independent of the facing curve. It may be closed tip where there's not much space between the reed and the tip, or maybe a larger open tip where there's a larger opening there. It's independent of the facing curve. Now looking at the spreadsheet real quickly. On the left-hand side, we have reed strength. Column D, we have tip opening. Column E is facing curve. Column C is how much does the reed have to flex depending upon the facing curve and tip opening. And down here in F is the facing curve qualities and what the player should recognize. So let's first look at the first three line items here. If we look at the tip openings here, all with the long facing curve, we have a small tip opening, medium and large. Basically what happens is with a long facing curve and a small tip, <clears throat> a lot of the reed, length of the reed itself, has to move and flex. And the tip only has to flex a shorter amount of distance, but a longer portion of the reed has to flex. If it's a long facing curve and a medium tip opening, of course, a long portion of the reed has to flex but only a medium amount of vertical flex. And of course, a large tip opening and long facing curve. You have a long portion of the reed that has to flex and a lot of vertical flex has to happen. So think about that with the reed. If you have a long facing curve and a short amount that has to flex, you could use a hard reed because it doesn't have to move much and a longer portion of the reed itself has to move. On a medium tip opening long facing curve, you could use a medium reed strength because a longer portion of the reed has to flex, but only a moderate amount. And if you have a long facing curve and a large tip opening, you'd be looking at soft to medium reed strength. But what advantages does that give the player? We have that over in column F. The longer facing favors lower notes. It requires more player control because your lip can control longer sections of the reed. And since a longer portion of the reed is in motion, then that means that the reed tip strikes a bit harder on the tip rail because there's more momentum in the entire length of the reed. Next, let's look at the medium facing curve. The section right here. First one is small tip opening, then medium, then large tip. On a medium facing curve and a small tip opening, basically a moderate amount of the reed itself has to move with small vertical flex as a small tip opening. 
not much to cover there. On a medium tip opening, of course, the medium amount of read has to move with a medium amount of vertical flex. Now, this kind of comes, hopefully, it's more understanding as we move on. Of course, with a medium facing curve and a large tip opening, you have a medium amount of the read that has to flex up and down, but a large vertical flex to cover the tip opening that we have there. And the read strength, basically, as we get to a larger tip opening, you may see now, the larger tip openings need softer reads. And the shorter facing curves also need softer reads. Looking at the qualities here in the far right, for the medium facing curve, we get the best compromise between too short and too long. It's ideal for a large majority of the players. High notes and low notes are easy to control. And you get a wider variety of reads that are more compatible. We're going to cover reads in a different episode and look at how they're designed and how they're cut. And then another episode, how they can match up with read, with uh, mouthpieces. On to the third section here of facing curves, a very short section. So basically, you'd be very close to the tip where the facing curve pulls down towards the tip. You'll find these a lot on, I believe, uh, Van Dorn's 5JB and 7JB jazz mouth pieces. Anyway, so small, medium, and large tip openings. On the small, of course, there's a small amount of the reed that has to flex and a small amount of vertical flex. So you can use basically a medium uh, hardness reed. On a short facing curve and a medium tip opening, of course, a small amount of the reed has to flex. It has to flex a certain amount of distance, which means you now have to use a soft reed because it has to flex more in the same amount of space as the short and short facing curve and tip opening. Now, in a short facing curve and a large tip opening, of course, that means that the reed has to flex a lot up and down, and you have to use a soft reed to do that, to accomplish that. What qualities does that give to the player? On the far right, we have down, requires less player control, but more breath control. Less player control because you don't have to control too much for read. There's only a short facing, a small amount of read that flexes. Of course, a very short section of read vibrates. Inexperienced players may have register issues with this, though. Registers may jump by themselves, so you got to be really careful. Doing short staccatos, requires more experience, but high notes are easier to obtain. Anyway, there's a real short video about facing curves and tips. In the next episode, we'll talk about baffles and how the shape of them affect the tone response. Thank you for listening today. Any questions or comments, please post them down below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. You got of knowledge, gall of life, gall of mouthpieces. We'll see you next time.